the second part, uh, I'm going to show you very quickly how the streaming mode works. So basically, we're going to do the same thing as we did in the first part, much faster. And I'm going to look at the time, uh, instead of typing everything perfectly. Uh, and at the time, I'm going to show you another example where I started doing like MFCCs and writing some values in a file which are quite meaningless to us because it's just a bunch of values. Uh, we're going to do some audio stuff for you can listen to the results. Um, okay. Um, yeah, also, uh, if you look at uh, the zip file that you can download, you have those files in there. Uh, so you have uh, the MP3 and like three files. So there's feature extractor, which uh, is pretty much what I did very different in the first part. So you can look very quickly at it. So you have uh, the import from Essentia, Essentia standard with the algorithm. Um, I define an extractor function, takes a file name, and does what we just did. So loads the <coughs> file. Uh, so in one step, create the loader and call it directly. The reason for the parentheses at the end. Um, create the pool, the windowing, the spectrum, the spectrum centroid. Uh, I compute the centroid for all the frames, put it in the pool. Then I compute mean and variance for the centroid, <coughs> and I output that in uh, that's some stuff, so you can actually call it as a, as a file. So someone told me if you can do this in a, in a, in a, in a text editor, so you can do it. Uh, this, you... I'm not going to explain it. Uh, look it up if you want to. Uh, just know that it's not necessary, but it's cleaner to have that. Uh, the thing that I can do now is, for instance, I can call Python feature extractor with my mp3 file and it does everything and it's success and you saw that it wrote this file which contains country in the uh, This is just so you have like a, let's say, reference uh, extractor. Um, so what I want to look at now is no. Uh, is the streaming part. So the streaming, we're going to want to do the same thing, but in streaming, which means we're not going to say uh, for frame in frame generator, compute the spectrum, compute the MFC, and compute this, uh, because that's the standard way. No. I don't like standard, but it's already standard. Uh, so you do the same thing, the algorithms have the same name, and they are configured in the same way, except they do not come from Essentia Standard, but they come out of Essentia Streaming. Uh, so for instance, we're going to get the same thing on the loader, uh, frame cutter, window in spectrum RCC. Notice here that it's called frame cutter and not frame generator, uh, because the frame generator is only a nice thing to have, so you can say for uh, my frame in frame generator, the algorithm in itself is for the frame cutter. Um, we instantiate them the same way. Um, okay. Uh, okay. Um, and the idea is that uh, we are going to <coughs> connect them. Uh, we're not going to say compute this and that and have all those temporary variables. Uh, we basically what we want to do, if you think about it on a high, higher level, is that we want to get the audio, uh, we want to cut it into frames so you can follow like all those connections. Uh, all of those frames we want to window them, uh, compute the spectrum, compute uh, the MFCC on it, and then do something with uh, our The types of connections, uh, they can be of different types. Uh, so you, you think about it in the, the, what is actually flowing from one algorithm to the other. So for instance, between the model loader and the frame cutter, what's flowing here is your audio signal. Which means it's a, continu well, it's continuous. It's a flow of audio samples, basically. Right? You, 
you send, like one audio sample after the other. Uh, once you get out of the frame cutter, uh, you don't have a flow of audio samples anymore, you have a flow of frames, which means that the frame cutter will give you one frame and then the next one and then the next one. Uh, the windowing is the same, like you have a frame that comes out uh, all the time, let's start. Um, so to connect stuff, uh, you need to give the name of the, uh, you need to use the name of the inputs and outputs and connect them using this uh, right shift operator that looks like a nice arrow. Uh, so the monoloader, if you look at the documentation for the monoloader, has one output which is called audio. Before you didn't care about the output name because uh, you would get them in order. Like you would say like the result of the you say okay audio is the output of it and was not named. Here as you want to connect it, uh, the name is important. So if you look at the
what is still the advantage then of the streaming? What is the advantage of the streaming? Uh, there is a huge advantage uh, is that it uses a lot less memory because when you work on big files, uh, if you work on the standard mode, you say uh, load audio and you load all the audio in memory. So for instance, if you have an audio which is one hour long, let's say, that's like 700 megabytes, like the size of a screen. Uh, if you have the streaming, uh, it's uh, does it little by little. So that is instead of loading everything and then saying, get all the frames and then for every frame do whatever I need to do. It just loads a little bit and basically think of it as if it was flowing, like water flowing. So it loads a little bit of audio and then everything gets computed and it ends up like the computing result at the end in your pool or whatever. And it keeps loading and it's like you kind of, uh, uh, yeah, imagine a river. I mean, like the usage of memory is constant. Uh, so that's one advantage. The other advantage is uh, that it can run in a multi-threaded way because uh, it's, uh, if you do it in the uh, standard way, you're telling the computer to do everything. So the computer is not trying to be smart. He just listens to you and does what you tell it. If you say, I want you to do this, uh, you say only what you want, not how you should do it. Uh, there are ways, like if it's a graph, I mean, graph is a, is a structure that's very well understood in computer science, has been uh, studied for uh, ever, basically. And uh, those little tasks are very easy to parallelize. So in the, stream, in the streaming way, for instance, if you connect your, uh, your network like that, <coughs> this, can, this, can a, this can run on a multi multiple processor. And the other advantage, uh, which in a lot in, in, in real life, um, you could have this running in real time. For instance, uh, you're all listening to radio, or you want to plug this on the radio, and you want to analyze in real time whether there's some stuff happening, like there's someone talking, or whether like it's actually music that's happening on the radio at this time. Uh, the streaming mode allows you to do this. So in, in free sound, for instance, uh, how it's implemented is in a streaming mode. Free sound in the what? most of the extractor and what free sound uses uses the streaming mode. Yes, it's a bit. Um, no, it's actually it's not harder, but it's, it's a different way of thinking. Uh, but it's the streaming mode is more efficient. Uh, the standard mode though is more useful if you want to do research and for instance you want to have an interactive stuff and you want to plug things on the top. Yeah, okay, actually I computed lots of stuff, I didn't plot lots of stuff, but Matplotlib uh, is actually pretty nice. I mean, you can have nice plots easily and it's, it's quite powerful. Uh, the streaming mode, there is not much that you can do except connecting and saying, do your stuff and it's over. So basically I would say that standard mode is more like for trying to research, trying to see what happens and everything. Once you have pretty clear what you want to do, uh, streaming mode is a good bet because it's going to be faster, it's going to be safer. Uh, okay. Um, so, okay, so we have this network. Um, we see that we have... Uh, yes, I'm also yes. Uh, this was our same use with water. 
Uh, so what we need to do is we need to connect uh, these two outputs. And let's say, for instance, that even if we don't need the bands, uh, we still have to say explicitly that we don't care about them. So you need to connect them to something here is written nowhere. Uh, basically, the bands you want to connect them to nothing. And the MFCC coefficients, you want to put them into a pool. So to connect them, to put them into a pool, you connect them, same as if you would connect it to a different algorithm, except you connect it to a pool and you say, obviously you have to say the name uh, in which it's going to be stored. So if you want to the same as a previous example, so I connect this to the pool and I say, Now, still nothing has happened. I've just created my object, put some connections, everything. Now, if I run it, uh, now everything has happened. Meaning, like, all the audio has loaded, has flown through the, all the algorithms, and the MFCs have been stored in the pool. For instance, I can show you that the pool now has. These are previous descriptors from before the break. Uh, this is the new descriptor, which I put here. Program <coughs> um, and I can, you can access, access it, and you can see that actually uh, all has been computed. Uh, and then there are some more actually connected to the file, but the frames. I just wanted to show you very quickly uh, so that you know that this exists, uh, the way it works, uh, that's pretty much it. After that, all the algorithms are the same, the parameters are the same, so everything, I mean, I'm saying 99% of the stuff that you can do in the standard mode, you can do in streaming and vice versa. Uh, the reasons are, as explained before, lower memory consumption, a little bit more efficient, actually quite, no, depends. Uh, but more efficient and um, somehow uh, safer because you can only connect stuff to one another. If you connect it to a wrong one, it says, hey, it, uh, I cannot do the connection because you're trying to connect a single value for instance, <coughs> to something that expects uh, a vector and, and basically safer because you're limited in the amount of stuff, including stupid stuff that you can do. And it's just like connecting stuff. Um, any more questions about the experiment? Okay, good. Um, okay. Now, very quickly also, uh, I'm going to show you how to compute uh, on sets on this file. So, this is like a drum loop and it might be uh, interesting to look at the others. So, uh, very quickly. Uh, <coughs> okay. So there's there are a few algorithms in Sensia that we're going to use. Uh, so, for instance. You have onsets, so it seems like a good diamond to start with. Tells you, that's the one we're going to use, uh, that as input you need a matrix of read which contains the onset detection functions and the weights. And the outputs, so that's the algorithm we want because as you see, uh, the output of this algorithm is the list of the onset times in seconds. Uh, it does a few things which I'm not gonna go over the text, which is gonna explain uh, very quickly. Uh, let's say you have your audio file which looks uh, like this. Alright. Uh, this 
algorithm is going to use different onset detection functions. So an onset detection function is pretty much any function uh, of type which uh, you can use or you think its value is going to be useful for doing onset detection. For instance, if you take the energy of this, it's going to look uh, a bit like uh, something like that. And then here you have a peak of energy, here you have a peak of energy, and here you have a peak of energy. Maybe you have uh, another function, you sometimes, uh, let's say you have some sounds where there's not a big difference in energy, but you still want to have an, an onset. Um, so let's say you have a different function here, which does, uh, and you want to combine uh, all those functions. So let's say here that we have a, an onset also that happens because we have something. And this function doesn't detect it, but this one does. Uh, so this, this algorithm, what it does, it takes a uh, few of those uh, input functions, so which you give it, which you, you can choose, <coughs> and a weight. So for instance, you say, I know that this one is probably going to be very useful, so I'm going to give it the weight of 0 0.8, and this one's not going to be very useful, although it might help. So I'm giving it the weight of 0 0.2. And this is, uh, this is the input to the onset algorithm. And the output is the list of time in seconds. So it's going to say there's one here, one here, one here, one here. Very, very general, but this uh, you get the idea. those onset detection functions uh, and then I'm going to call the onset algorithm with all of those with uh, times and then I get back the times and what I'm going to do uh, which is nice is I'm going to take the audio put uh, those onsets on top of the audio and write it to an output file so I can actually listen to it uh, okay so there's uh, this file uh, I'm using so again model order of my file name and I call it directly okay so see, this line is the same as if I would do loader equals this and then audio equals loader parenthesis so I do both of them in the same line here 
And there are two different uh, onset detection functions you can choose from. So you have uh, a method here. So you can either use the HFC method or the complex method. Uh, I'm not going to go into details. Look at the HFC type. Nothing going to use. Um, and I'm going to use, I'm going to see both of them and I'm going to try to compare uh, like which one works the best for our case. So I create my first onset detection function, which is uh, HFC. And I create my second one, which is a complex one. Uh, I do all the normal uh, thing, like get the windowing, get my FFT. Uh, note here, this is a complex FFT because this onset detection function needs the complex FFT. So I cannot just take the spectrum because then I didn't have the phase information. Um, I get this Cartesian polar uh, algorithm, which uh, the complex FFT, when you get it, it's like real part and imaginary part. But uh, most of the time, you don't really care about this information. What you want is magnitude and phase. So to go from real uh, imaginary to magnitude and phase, you need uh, this algorithm that converts it. Um, you need the pool, as usual, to store our data. Uh, so again, we do the same thing. We iterate over all the frames in our audio. We compute the magnitude and phase by doing usual things. So this, we have our frame, we window it, we compute the complex FFT, and the complex FFT, we turn it into a pair, which is magnitude and phase, instead of being uh, really imaginary. Um, then we compute our uh, detection functions. So we have our onset detection function one, which takes the magnitude and phase as input. And the result of this, we put it in the pool. So it's like our HFC. <coughs> so we do the same thing with our second onset detection function, and we put it into uh, uh, the complex uh, variable. So at this point here, we have a pool which basically contains uh, those two time series, like those two onset detection functions. Uh, I get my onset algorithm. Uh, here's this bit of what uh, mm -hmm. but part where I need to pay attention. The onset uh, takes as argument a matrix where each row is actually uh, uh, one detection function. So the, if you take only uh, the HFC detection function, so you say, okay, it's a single function, so I will you need the matrix? Yes, you need the matrix. It's just a matrix which has one row. So you make a, a, a list of this and you take an array. Uh, kind of, uh, if you make a list of it like that, <coughs> has the correct dimension, but this is a Python list. It's not a numpy array. So what you do is you just uh, it to, uh, you need a numpy array, uh, as you always want them and use them, uh, array has also been imported into Essentia. So this is actually Essentia.array, but I imported everything from Essentia. So, like this, uh, no, not everything. Here I said from Essentia import array. This is actually a numpy array that works uh, well, numpy array. Um, so I get my features, uh, I have only one onset detection function, so I don't care the weight I give it. I just give it the weight of one. Um, and then I do the same uh, for the complex. Uh, this thing and this thing is the same, but without the counts. Uh, so what I have now here is uh, one list of onsets, onset times, seconds, that computed using the HFC method as a as a detection function and here the same uh, with the other function um, and then uh, instead of looking at the times which doesn't make much sense I'm gonna listen to them so <coughs> there's this algorithm that's called audio onsets marker which uh, takes the list of onsets you want to write so here I'm gonna write the uh, HFC and uh, I'm going to mark those onset on the audio that I have, uh, the one on which I've computed them. 
and I'm going to write it to one file, and then I'm going to do the same thing with the <coughs> second list of offsets, and I'm going to write it to the second file. Uh, and actually, just to show off, I'm just going to write it to an MP3 file instead of writing it to a WAV file. And if I execute this, files, I have those two files, and so if you remember the loop is and the, the HFC method did this, Thank you. 